It's time for the MCTS Experience with Mr. Orr and Mr. Nash. Discover your passion and unlock your future. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, today's an exciting day here at Mercer County Technical Schools. Uh, we're having our first Skills USA Leadership Conference and Advisor Get Together for the year. And I'm excited to have actually a dynamic individual from the Skills USA family uh, from Gloucester County uh, School of Technology, uh, Dave White. Hello, how are you? Oh, great, Dave. Glad to have you here. Um, so, people, if you're listening to this podcast, we have another uh, podcast uh, leading up to this precursor that had we had Mr. Peter Carey, the director of Skills USA, to um, explain the dynamics of skills. And, and Dave's nodding his head, and I'm nodding my head. So, if you're more than welcome to listen to this, and, and when you're done, go back and check out the podcast on the site and explaining a little bit more in depth of what Skills USA is. But we, the reason we want to grab Dave is, is first of all, Dave, share with the crowd who you are and uh, what you do for your district. So um, I'm a Skills USA advisor at Gloucester County Institute of Technology. Um, I've been around Skills USA for, I'm, I guess, roughly 25, maybe 30 years, depending on how wow. you count it. Wow. And uh, um, so I'm actually, uh, I am a career tech convert. I um, am a history teacher mm. who somehow found a fit in Skills USA. <laughs> Which is is for our career tech. So people think you know you look like a, maybe an audiovisual guy. No, I'm a, I'm a I'm a history teacher. You're a history buff, converted. and yeah. we live in kind of a good spot for yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. All, all the Revolutionary War stuff and all that other good stuff, right in the area locally. Yeah. So it's neat for someone with an academic background to tread into the CTE area of Skills USA, and Skills USA does have an academic component, hands down. I mean, you and I know the 115, 114 contest, but it's not just the contest, you know. I'm a person that loves the contest component, but I'm also a person that loves the community outreach. I love the, the leadership training, and that's what our students are doing. See, we're we're in a class right next door while students and, and members of the SkillsUSA family, primarily all students, are learning public speaking, uh, learning how to appreciate and learn other people's skills and what they're studying. And it's a room right now of about 40 students, and we do this once a year, and there's actually going to be a uh, central region officer, which is a unique uh, position, and uh, your su- your southern region, which is great, That's correct, yeah. and you're going to have some s- students running for that uh, position down by you. Yes. And but if you're listening to this, so you've heard within a matter of thirty seconds that there's contests, there's leadership training, there are students running for officer positions where they engage students from other schools and other districts. And again, it's kind of like a student council on steroids. I often say to moms and dads, it's like a fraternity in college, except having to do with your son or daughter's direct career interest. So. That being said, what are you looking forward to today? And I know that you're going to be doing one of these down in the southern region, but you're here today to mine information from other advisors and for us to receive information on what the year is going to shape up for for us as a New Jersey family. So, Yeah, so, um, I mean, I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing the officer speeches. Uh, I always think it's good to see where those students Mm. are coming from, what their career tech experience is. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I re- what I really enjoy today and was just doing with uh, with uh, another advisor and some other advisors. I like to network and 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 spread knowledge of a of a little contest that I do called Chapter Business Procedure, Ooh. and uh, so we knew we'd get that one in. And uh, so that's a that's an aspect of skills you say I don't know if everybody knows about, but I, I'm really excited about. So, it. And that's where an academic teacher can fit. Well, here's the cool part. So I want you to give me an elevator speech on Chapter Business Procedure. As a student growing up, I participated yeah. in chapter business procedure. And when people hear it, they're like, yeah, I thought you guys were a Votech. Yeah. I can't believe you do that. And again, we strike the word Votech. I love how you did And you know it. CTE, career and tech ed, because the stigma that was once there. And we knew why that stigma was there. Because right. in the 70s, it was jean jackets and mullets. Yeah. Def Leppard. Yeah. Cinderella. <laughs> and that's okay, but th- it's it's so different just because the times change, the technology changes. And let's face it, the reality of what education is on a very broad scale is changing for the emerging adults. We don't say kids. These guys and gals are emerging adults, and they want something real, something tangible. So share with everybody what a, a chapter business procedure team does and the contest in itself. So a chapter business procedure team and the contest are about uh, mastering the group decision-making process. Uh, There's a a term called parliamentary procedure that I usually don't (laughs) say to the kids because they imagine people in wigs and the gavel, of course, the gavel. So true. Um, But it's it's all about 
can you structure and make a decision uh, on stuff related to your chapter? And that's why it's called chapter business. Mm. And uh, mm. so what is it? It, gives, it builds students' confidence. It, it builds the ability to make the 30-second speech because that's what the contest really builds off of. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it is the leadership component in that it helps, it helps bring this decision-making, you know, I don't want to say out of the hands of the advisors, but into the hands of the students so that they can take a greater role. And, and they could apply that to their friends when they're a great adventure. Hey, which rides do we want to go to first? I mean, I'm sitting here thinking about it as an instructor and as a dad and as a parent and all this stuff. I'm like, wow. If, if that could be taught to my daughters who are in school, but they're doing it in a formal way, they're going to revisit it again in a business environment, whatever career they end up, yes. white collar, blue collar, everything in between, small business, entrepreneurship, you name it, this is applicable and real. Yeah. So I'm really glad that you said that because I, I'm excited now to, to ignite the possibility of that within my own chapter because you so succinctly described it. And again, I was a student that lived that competition but now I actually have a student running today, uh, Dynamic Girl, Annalise Marquez, incredible. Uh, and she wants to bring that that hierarchy or that that component, that decision-making component back mm-hmm. to our school as we unfold philanthropic interactions with the community. As we do uh, events at nursing homes or fundraisers that like drive one for your school. And so that'll be awesome for, for you to do that. Are you going to are you going to be able to uh, convey your desire to broaden this to the other advisors that are here today? I hope so. It, it, it has to be a, a, a grassroots sort of thing because uh, what, what gets people hooked is really the fun part is the debate. Mm. And uh, we bring up questions like, is water wet? And another great, is the dress blue? And uh, so we wouldn't put a student out on the road without basic understanding of how to drive. In fact, we'd spend mm-hmm. months on mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Why, would we, why would we let them get elected or chosen to organizations that are making decisions without teaching them how to use that process? Wow. and and wow. so that's the fun part is the debate. The real world part is how to make decisions. So uh, I like to, you know, I like to I'm I'm a I'm a sort of a apostle for it. And I try to <laughs> I do. I try to have little things I can give <laughs> to people amazing. that'll be, you know, a little card or something that, sure. that says, how can you take this back to your chapter? Love it. Love it. Uh, final thing. Uh, what do you hope to experience uh, on a very broad scale for your like, what is your chapter? What is your school? Uh targeting this year i mean gloucester is a powerhouse we love them as part of the skills family yeah. they're they're great each one of us has our strengths and weaknesses what are you guys hoping to achieve and build off of this year so i, I think one of the things we really uh looked at this year was we've we've got our officer team good and functioning uh we're looking looking uh we're looking to broaden uh uh student leadership into developing committees that can start to handle different functions of our chapter getting some of our younger people involved so, wow. yeah. Wow. Well, look, it's exciting. I mean, thanks for spending some time with us. Uh, and if you want to learn more, you can go to uh, skillsusa.org. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you can Google Gloucester County Institute of Technology if you have family and friends that live in the region. Because that's the, if you're in Gloucester County, that's where you're going to go. Yeah. And uh, it's exciting to hear things that are not so uh, votech y yeah. going on from especially an academic teacher and in your empowering students. So, thanks. Yep. Looking forward to talking to other people as this day unfolds. Right, Producer Nick? Cheers.